everyone! So today we are doing a very exciting video. In this video we are going to be trying something that we have never done on this channel before and that is we are going to try our hand at pottery and I am so excited. So I have done pottery before. It's funny when I think back because my mom is actually really good at pottery. Shocker, my mom's good at another thing. Another random talent that she's just awesome at. But she actually put me in a pottery group that was like 12 classes when I was like really young. I'm talking like 10 years old and I remember really liking it but I didn't really make anything good but it was like cute because I was young, you know. You cherish the pieces because your kid made it. But quite a few months back I actually went in a pottery class and the pieces turned out so nice and I fell in love with like using a pottery wheel and I ended up sharing those pieces on Instagram I'll put them right here and the comments were just like flooded with do a video how do you do pottery please teach us I will not be able to teach you too much I am very much a beginner and I'm just learning I went on to ask you guys on Instagram if you wanted me to like practice up and then teach you how to do it or to just jump into it not knowing a ton of knowledge on it and just learn as I go and that was what you guys wanted to see so we're gonna learn together. I also then went on to make a jewelry dish. It's like this little whale. It's his birthday. There's like birthday cake around and I did that with my fingers so I said do you guys want to see a wheel or just hand crafting and you guys wanted to see the wheel. But there is ways to do pottery without the wheel so if you're interested to see that in the future let me know because the wheel is expensive. This wheel I purchased was $300, which is surprisingly a inexpensive pottery wheel. Very, very expensive hobby, so it's probably good to start with just handcrafting before you get a wheel, but we'll see how this one works. Hopefully it's good. It had some good reviews, but I don't know. Anyways, I'm rambling a lot. <laughs> I'm nervous. I have all my sculpting tools here. I have passion. I love handmade pottery. I just love the differences of each piece. You can try and make the same piece 12 times. There's always going to be little differences because you're making it from scratch, and I just think that's so beautiful and just being able to make anything out of clay and then it's actually like usable like a plate or a dish it's just exciting for me first we're gonna throw our clay into hopefully a bowl and then we'll go from there because it's gonna have to dry so i'll have like a day to think let's throw <laughs> hello i'm very high up so the wheel I got, it has legs to it, but it's just not high enough, so I put it on a little table, but then it was too high, so I have to go up on this really high stool, but whatever, we're making it work. So here is my wheel. It's actually pretty decent. The reviews said it didn't go that fast, but I think because I'm a beginner, I didn't really notice, because to me, it definitely goes fast enough. Whoa, like that's fast. Okay, I'm already a step ahead of myself. I actually need to get my clay out. So I just want to throw something small, so I think that'll probably be enough. Okay, is that enough? I might need a little more. I love cutting the clay with this wire thing. Like, it's really fun. I'm basically just gonna fold the clay into itself. <laughs> I don't know what this does, but I was told it's important, maybe for like air bubbles or something. And it just gets the clay loosened up, just like this. Kind of like what you would do before making a pizza. If you made like dough, you want to knead it a little. You got to knead it. I need you, clay. I need you. The nice part about working with clay is it just like rinses out, but I'm still just going to protect myself a little bit. So. So this is like centering your pottery and like the first step of throwing is you have to like slam it on and like don't be gentle. This was the thing I kind of struggled with in the class I took because I didn't want to hit it but you gotta hit it like you mean it, like you hate it. So I'm going to take some water on this sponge, I'm going to put some water on top my clay and my hands. I want them to be wet. You want to be up close. That was another thing. I'm like re-remembering all the things I learned, but like you want to be close to the pottery wheel. Really close. Like weirdly close. We got to build it up high and push it down. So I'm cupping it and then it's growing. Like as you can see, it hasn't changed much, but you can see the edges. That's because I'm squeezing it up and then I'm going to push it down. That's kind of like, if you have ever watched pottery videos, that's kind of the first step they do. It takes them like five seconds because they're like experts at it. 
but it's a little bit difficult, honestly, to learn. So, but once you get that, it's supposed to be a lot easier. Okay, so now I'm gonna start pushing it down while still supporting it. See, I'm just pushing on the top basically, bringing it down while it's also supporting the sides. Oops, my hands are a little dry. Okay, so now that is supposed to be centered. So I'm gonna start putting my fingers in. Now an important thing is don't just like boop, poke right in. It's important to like work your way in through the sides, especially if you're making a bowl, cause then it'll be more rounded. I am realizing my bowl is going to be so small, so probably another like jewelry dish, but whatever. I'm still excited about it. I'll clean up the sides a little bit. So I'm gonna start working my thumbs in while we're supporting the sides. My camera is about to stop recording, which is so inconvenient because I literally am like, <laughs> like, how do I click record? Oh, <gasps> no! I did bad, bad work there. Do you guys see that thing that I just made? I punched it with my knuckle. I can tell from me poking the sides, it's a little uneven now, so. I'm just trying to make it work now. Now I'm sure there's a lot of pottery experts watching this being like, what are you doing? And to them I say, I'm learning. Like this is already kind of a cute shape. I just want to get it deeper because like it only goes down about this much. Whoa, so I'm starting to bowl out, gotta put that back. Wow, look at my little bowl I'm making. It's getting very noodly now. I really gotta sort this top bit out. <laughs> it looks like Winnie the Pooh's honey jar. What am I doing now? I'm not thinking. I'm just doing. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> ah! I did not mean to do that. Okay, but wait a sec. This is kind of cute. Okay, I don't know what it is now, but like... Maybe I should stop. To get it off of here is a little bit difficult, so you're gonna take the wire again, and you're gonna wrap it around your fingers and you're gonna get it as close to the base as you can get it and you're gonna push it and then just slide it underneath okay like that and then a good way to pick it up is like I saw in a video literally yesterday is like peace signs and then you're gonna grab it from the bottom and move it to where it's drying oh there we go okay, and here it sits I'm gonna throw one more really quick so I'm just gonna wedge it out of the clay and we'll see. I'm kind of thinking this could hold like paper clips, you know, I think that's in its future. We'll see what else I can make. And by the way, I'm hitting it into like kind of like a smushed triangle or pyramid more, like it's 3D. Add a little bit of fun, you know? I don't know what it's gonna be, but a little wave wouldn't hurt. So you just pinch the sides. That. I love it! All right, so now I gotta do the same thing. I right, take off the uh, bottom little bit. Use this again, because it worked so well for me. Now this one's a lot heavier, 
<laughs> have to be careful. Peace sign. Grab it from the base. <gasps> oh gosh, oh gosh, move it over. Definitely not perfect, but one of the things I love about pottery is that it's not perfect, like everything looks different. I don't know, I just really like that, the uniqueness of it. Cover them actually with a wet uh, towel just so they dry gradually, because I just don't want them to dry all at once because they might crack. Okay, it's the next day. These have been drying overnight, but honestly, they didn't dry that much. But I'm going to do the carving of the bottom. As you can see, there's like a little bit of a lip at the bottom, so I'm just going to be scratching that off with this tool. I don't know what it's called, but it looks like this, and I'm just gonna scratch it off on the wheel. Never done this before, actually. Like the pottery class I did, they did the scratching of the bottom, so this is my first time, so we'll see. I don't know, I'm going to put it on its face in the center. I'm nervous. <laughs> I just want it to go really slow. Oh yes, this is great. <gasps> ah! Isn't there something you're forgetting? First of all, why are you acting so weird? And secondly, I'm not forgetting anything. What about that beautiful case on your phone? This video is in fact sponsored by Casetify. I love their cases so much. Not only are they cute, but they're also super protective. They're made out of Chi Tech, and also you can drop them from up to 6.6 .6 feet and it won't damage your phone, not even on the corners. So even in my tallest, most extra shoes, my phone is safe. I'm gonna do a drop test for you guys to prove it. Drop test time, the only issue is I'm not six foot six inches, so I decided to Bring in the shoes and hopefully that will help. I'm gonna move my carpet out of the way because I wanna drop it on hardwood. It's a little bit hard to walk in these, but okay. Here is my phone before, no scratches, nothing. It's just a little bit dirty, but okay, I'm gonna drop it. The shoes I'm tall, but I'm also gonna hold it over my head. Three, two, one. All right. Let's see, it is fine. No scratches, I've honestly had this case on my phone for so long, you guys, and I've dropped it so many times and it has never cracked nothing. On top of being really protective, they're also very thin, 13 millimeters to be exact. Their cases have a great look and very fun designs. You can even add your name for a truly custom look and personalization. I didn't add my name, but I did write sunshine across this one. Best of both worlds, protection plus personalization. Casetify's antimicrobial coating keeps your phone germ-free, killing 99% of bacteria, and they are partially made from recycled plastic, so you can feel good about that. If you're interested in trying a Casetify case, use my link casetify.com slash Maples to get 20% off. Mia! Did you tell them? <laughs> Okay guys, so it has been about four days since I saw you last. These are completely dried. I am so impressed with how they turned out. So I really love how this swirly one turned out. I have no idea what I'm gonna paint yet, but I feel like this one look, would look really cute with like a succulent in here. And then this little one, I've been thinking so much about what I should turn this into, and I almost feel like it'd be a cute like little ring and earring holder. Sort of like a jewelry dish, but a little bit like smaller and less flat, like an unconventional 
jewelry dish. I love the little details on the side. There's a lot of texture on here from where my fingers were. I'm going to be painting these today. Now I paint different than like I think most people do their pottery. Like most people do glaze and then they put it in a kiln. But I don't have a kiln so what I do is I use acrylic paint and then I just put this um, thick gloss glaze sealant on here. Trusting the sealant with a lot, but it's worked good so far. I've used it twice, so I'm gonna be using that. But yeah, kilns can be very expensive, and I don't know how they work exactly, so I don't have any, so I'm just gonna use acrylic paint. So if you're doing any pottery at home, just know that you can use acrylic paint and then put a gloss on top. It's probably not as good as using like the regular pottery gloss and then kilning it, but we're doing with what we have. I have like a lot of acrylic paint and here I have more like pastels and like fun colors. And of course you're gonna need paintbrushes unless you're gonna do finger painting. But now I need an idea and I'm wondering should I do an idea just out of my head or should I try and like find a popular look that people like, I don't know. I almost wanna just do something that I've thought of. Like I have this really cute idea, I think, to do like a lavender color with like daisies on it. I don't know how it would look, I'm not sure, but I think I should try. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of purple. <gasps> I already did it. I already got paint on me. <sighs> okay, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of purple and when I say little, I mean a little, because I want it to be really, really light, so I'm gonna mainly do white. Ooh, I think that is definitely the color I want. Oh my gosh, I love that, I love this purple. The fun part about pottery is like you can make whatever you want. Like say you have an open space on your dresser and you just can't find something that fits there. Well, make something that fits. Now I'm just gonna mix up the color for the inside of the daisies, which I think will be like a really, really light yellow, like a very pastel yellow. See, and now I'm looking at this purple, I'm like, is it too dark? Like, I feel like it might be too dark. Let me add a bit of white. Is this more the color I want? Like really, really light? I don't know. Okay, am I happier with that color? I don't know. Now this color is for the entire base of the little one and then for the center of the flower. Ooh, that is so pretty. We're gonna paint this little guy. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of texture on here. I probably should have sanded this before I got painting. That's my bad. So if you guys are doing this and you see a little bit of texture on your pottery piece, if you like it, leave it. Like sometimes the texture looks kind of nice. Um, but if you don't like it, just take a little bit of fine grit sandpaper and just scratch that off. But for me, it is too late because I'm already painting and I'm not stopping clearly. Look at me. I'm still going. Now this one I'm going to make sure to paint the inside because the inside is going to be exposed. I'm not putting a plant in this one. It'll probably just be jewelry pieces. So the inside is going to get seen. So I definitely want to make sure to paint this. That's the first coat on here. It'll probably need two coats by the looks of things. But let us look back at this one. How are you doing over here? It's actually like feeling pretty dry. That's the nice thing about using acrylic paint is it dries super, super quick, which is so nice. Okay, now this is where it's gonna get a little bit difficult because now I need to take a precise brush and I need to, also my hair looks insane right now. I'm gonna draw these little flowers on here. So I'm gonna take just like a really small brush and I'm just gonna test one spot. So like, let's put a little dot right here. And then the petals are gonna be white, so I'm just gonna pour out a little bit of white. You wanna use a really opaque white because if you're going in like 100 times in the white, it can get kind of frustrating. That's what I find. I had like a really sheer white that was annoying me. So I'm just gonna see what the petals look like. <gasps> oh, I'm really shaking today, why? Okay, here's the flower that I made. Can you even see that? It's right here. It's kind of hard to see because it's such a light color, but I think it's cute.
here's how it's looking right now. I'm half done and now I just have to do this part. Yee. Okay, I think I got most of that done. I love how like randomly placed these flowers are. I didn't want them to all like make sense. Even some are smaller than others, so. That looks pretty good. Okay, I've decided I'm not gonna paint anything on here. I like how they look together with the yellow bouncing off the inside of the flowers to this. So this one's ready to glaze. This one's just gonna sit for a minute. So let's take this glaze. I just apply it with a paintbrush, but make sure to really rinse the paintbrush afterwards just because if it hardens in your paintbrush, it's probably gonna ruin your paintbrush. Now I like to put like a healthy amount of this. Like really glob it on there. It does a really good job of like perfecting your mistakes so that they look like they were actually supposed to happen. Now I'm just gonna check, see if the flowers are ready. Okay, I'm gonna start in the inside. Like if you can see the difference between the glaze and the not glaze, the glaze looks so much more finished versus the not glaze has like lots of imperfections and stuff like that. Like the glaze just really does a good job of hiding all those imperfections. That's why I just like love this step to be honest. Okay, so now that all of the sealant is on, this needs to dry for like 24 to 48 hours. So quite a long time. I'll probably dry for 24 and then flip them over and do the bottoms, and do the rest of the 24. And then I gotta get a little plant for him. It's gotta be a really small plant because this does not have a lot of depth now that I'm looking at it. But I'm sure something will be okay in there. But like the glaze really helped these pieces look more professional. We still have lots to do though. So we must do that. I thought the sealant would take two days to dry because it took two days on my last thing, but it is super dry already. And I did the bottom after about six hours and that is dry as well. So, I mean, I'll take it. I ain't complaining. I do want to plant something in here. And I was thinking about it because I'm a little nervous because I made it a little shallow, so I think I might plant a fake plant, which I know, I know, some people really don't like fake plants. I have lots of real plants and I have lots of fake plants. It, I just don't want to plant something in here and then it not have enough space to make roots. So I have this little fake succulent and I think it would be really cute in here so I'm actually gonna plant it with real soil <laughs> just so it looks real <laughs> now obviously I'm not too concerned about how I pack it all down because there isn't a real plant in here oh my gosh that's so cute <gasps> Oh my goodness, how cute is that sitting next to this? Okay, let me stage it up. All right, you guys, so that was a pretty lengthy process, but we have our matching pot with our jewelry holder. When I started this video, I had absolutely no idea what we were gonna make, but I am so, excited with the outcome. I am super happy with how these pieces turned out. As I said in the beginning of the video, this is my first time using a wheel with like no supervision. So it was, it was hard, it was hard. It was difficult, but I think it worked out. And you know, when I was letting this piece dry, I really didn't know what it was gonna be, but now that it's a little ring and like earring holder, I just think it's so adorable. And like this little planter with the plant in it, I just love, the unique shapes, like nothing is perfect. As you can see, this side's a lot higher than this side. All the little pinches are different shapes. That's just something that I love about pottery and being able to make things that are just like so unique and weird shaped. So I, I'm really happy with it. Like I can't wait to find a little home for these to sit. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys would like to see a pottery video making things without the wheel, because I know a lot of people don't have a wheel 
they don't have a kiln, I don't have a kiln. So if you'd like to see how to do pottery without those things, I'm not an expert, but we can learn together. So if you're interested in that, make sure to let me know. Or if you'd like to see more pottery videos on the wheel, I would absolutely love to do more videos, so please give me an excuse to do more. I would love to do like an ASMR pottery video. I just feel like there's so many fun sounds that making pottery makes, so let me know down below. But if you want to see no more pottery videos, also tell me that down below as well, and I will stop. But okay, I will stop. I will let you go. <laughs> please don't go. <laughs> please don't go. Please don't. For real though, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye!